beauty is an art. The art of enhancing and harmonizing. Hello, I'm John Davis. Welcome to a transforming guide for cross-dressing makeup, the first in our series of instructional videos produced for the benefit of the transgender community. Our sole goal is to help you look your absolute best, no matter if you are new to the art of cross-dressing or a more experienced transsexual. This video series will offer something for everyone. Transgender makeup needs are different than those of a woman. A man's face is larger, with smaller eyes and lips, and more prominent jaw and brow bones. A woman's face has larger eyes and lips, and a softer structure. The image others perceive of you can be controlled through the proper application of makeup and hairstyling. You will find my method of makeup application based on 12 years of experience as a makeup artist and cross-dresser, simple and easy to use every time you get dressed. The professional techniques in this video, along with lots of practice, will enable you to create an attractive and believable new you. In this lesson, I am going to show you two techniques on my models, both using only three eyeshadow colors for the eyes. One technique will be natural and fresh. The first one, however, will be more involved, demonstrating taping and lashes. Watch both makeovers and use those pause and rewind buttons and go over any technique that you may have trouble getting. Join me now for the transformations. After preparing the skin by shaving after a hot shower and applying a tiny amount of pure vitamin E oil, we prepare Diana for her makeup. We prepare Diana by taping. Taping is done with surgical tape, lifting the skin back and up connected to the wig cap for an instant facelift. I use three colors of foundations, the darkest color at the neck, and gradually get a little lighter as I move up the face, applying a generous amount of cream foundation, making sure I cover the entire face, lips and eye sockets as well. Then I take a sponge and blend everything together using a very firm hand. This step is very important as it creates your smooth, flawless skin. Using a powder puff, not a brush, I dip into a loose powder and very firmly press the powder in over the entire face. I use a very generous amount to create a beautiful finish that is very low maintenance. Don't worry about using too much. Remember to press powder into all areas of the face. Smooth out any blotchy looking areas with your puff until all is smooth appearing. Firmly pat into the neck area. Make sure to get close up under the eyes as well to set any under eye lining. Then take a large soft brush and lightly use downward strokes to remove any excess powder that the foundation does not want to hold. This will complete the look of your skin and you may start to bring out the best in your features. Using a matte textured brow pencil, Use short, soft strokes going from the inner eye to the arch. 
The arch will be above the iris of the eye. From the arch, move out with short strokes and follow the brow bone down. Create an imaginary line from the outer corner of the eye, following the sweep up to the tail of the brow. Move on to your other brow at once so you can get the brows even. This frames the top of the eye socket and changes your bone structure, making it appear more feminine already. Use a brow brush or an old toothbrush to blend the pencil strokes to make brows as soft as possible. Softness is the key. Keep blending until they look great to you. My eyeshadow technique uses a combination of eyeshadow colors all in the same color category. A dark, a light, and a medium. On Diana, I use neutral colors of taupe, brown, and ivory. Taupe is the medium toned color, so I go under her eyes to make them appear larger. This will act as a soft, natural under eyeliner or soften the eyeliner that is applied later. I suggest you do the same step to each eye as you approach that step for an even appearance. I follow an imaginary line I created doing the brows from the outer corner of the eye toward the tail of the brows, stopping approximately three quarters of the way there. This is the crease of the eye moving some shadow to the lower part of the brow bone, thus elongating her eyes and making them appear larger and wider. I am using my medium color to start with. I fill in the crease with this color. At this time, I apply the same technique to the other eye to be even. Don't worry about the eyeshadows looking too harsh as I will soften it later. Always blow excess color off your eye applicator so that it won't end up on the cheeks. I use my lightest eyeshadow to highlight and soften the brow bone by placing it under the brow. I then reapply more of my medium color to the outer corner to prepare for the dark color. I am placing my darkest color on the outer corner of the eye using a folded tissue so no color will fall onto the cheeks. Apply more highlight under the brow bone at the arch and to the inner corner of the eye.
You can see how harsh the eyeshadows look prior to blending. Using the arch of the eyebrow as our point of destination, blend with your blush brush up and out. Do not worry about removing too much color. Use short rounded light strokes. My technique of layering and blending means to just reapply the same colors to a few strategic points and re-blend. Take a bare sponge and lightly tap any eyeshadow color away from under the eyes. Softening a man's bone structure makes the face appear more feminine. Contouring is the key to this using light and dark. Using blush to minimize and build and lightener to bring out great features. To find the proper place to build your cheekbone, suck your cheeks in and find the outermost part of the face. Your cheekbone is connected to the top of your ear at the hairline. Lightly dust with a blush and use upward strokes. Not too much color, however. We will come back to do that. Apply to both sides to keep even. Do not come down past the outer corner of the eye. A strong chin can be softened with a simple application of blush. The entire jawbone can be softened as well. To minimize a prominent nose, simply blush the sides of the nose and the tip. Remember to be light-handed when contouring. Not enough is better than too much. Then, taking a highlighting powder such as cream, ivory, or porcelain, Go between the eyes to soften the brow bone as well as separate the eyes. Build a shelf on top of the cheekbones. Take a soft brush and blend, blend, and blend some more. Blend that highlighter until it is soft thus lifting the cheeks more naturally. Blend all contouring with a powder puff. A lip pencil helps keep color from smearing or bleeding. I start with a V in the top bow of the lips using short dot-like strokes. Blend and connect to the outer corners of the lips.
Start on the outside corner of the bottom lip and connect the dots to the center. I go just outside Diana's natural lip line to make her lips appear fuller. Then use a lip brush for great control. Use a generous amount of lip color on your brush to fill in the lines. We have created the integrity of Diana's makeup. The eyes are the most expressive feature, so I am going to make them softly just pop out at you. For eyelashes, I squirt an inch of glue on a piece of paper and dip the pre-cut lash into the glue. After waiting to let the glue set for about one minute, I attach the false lashes to the base of Diana's lashes, getting them as close into her lash line as possible. I open her eyes right away before the glue dries and adjust them by pressing down again on them, then sticking them back to the inner corner of the eye, blending Diana's natural lashes to the false ones with mascara. I suggest to do your own mascara, you lean into the mirror and tilt your head back and successfully open up your eyes with mascara. But take your time and be very careful, mascara can be very messy. Moisten a Q-tip and gently wipe off any mascara mistakes before the mascara dries. A small amount of liner is added to the outside corners of Diana's eyes. Take a powder puff and reapply a tiny amount of powder to the face. Make sure any contouring is not obvious. After putting on a wig, you may want to touch up when you can see your entire look or from day to evening. Simply increase your colors. Lips are made more intense. Eyeliner is added to the top of the eye. I use liquid, but this can be difficult for the beginner, so I suggest a felt tip liner or a smudged pencil. Liquid is bled down into the lash line for a much more dramatic eye look. Blush is added and softened. A single touch of darker eyeshadow on the outer corner of the eye and a mini eye lift with highlighter powder under the eyes. Roll in with a Q-tip and blended with a powder puff. Now Diana is ready for a day in the office or an elegant dinner or a night on the town. After preparing by shaving after a hot shower and applying a tiny bit of 100% pure vitamin E oil, we're ready to do Donna's face. 
Donna's makeup will be very fresh and easy and is great for everyone. Using one color of foundation that matches Donna's skin tone, I apply a generous amount and blend down into the lower neck, making sure I get the entire face. Take a sponge and blend to a smooth, flawless finish. This step is very important. I can't stress enough how important it is to blend until everything is smooth. This step takes me the longest. Make sure you blend up around the eye area without getting too much foundation on the brows. Using a powder puff, not a brush, apply a generous amount of powder and firmly press it in, blending down to the lower neck. Then take a large, soft brush to remove any excess powder using soft, downward strokes. To accent Donna's bone structure, she sucks in her cheeks so that I may apply a light contour line on the outermost part of the face. The cheekbone connects to the hairline at the top of the ear. Subtle cheek contouring is best we will come back to add color later. A prominent chin can be minimized by applying blush over it. Blush added to the forehead will make it less wide. And finally, soften the jawbone by following it with the blush. All this will make the face appear softer and more feminine with the finished result. Lifting the eyebrow in the arch corner above the iris, use small, soft strokes with a medium textured brow pencil and move up towards the arch. Then, from the arch point, follow it down creating an imaginary line between the outer corner of the eye and the brow tail. My second technique of makeup also uses only three colors of eyeshadow to achieve the entire look of the eyes. I start underneath Donna's eyes with a medium color. Again, I'm using a medium color, a dark color, and a light color. I cover Donna's entire eyelid in my medium eye color. This will make a fresh, natural look without it looking too made up or not made up enough. I extend just a little bit out from the eyelid to the upper part of the crease and the upper end part of the brow bone. Make sure when you use an applicator that you don't mix your colors. Use a clean side for every color that you use.
I then take a highlighting color and go up under Donna's eyebrow, starting in the highest point of the arch and blending out on both sides. I then take my dark eyeshadow, completing the trio of colors, and apply the dark to the outer part of Donna's eyelid. This is a simple, quick, and easy way to apply three eye colors and have them look very nice and natural. You can see the look here as to how rough they look, but let's go ahead and blend them. Layering and blending is a common technique. Once you have achieved your colors, you blend them with a blush brush to the upper iris corner or to the arch of the eyebrow. When you have blended away most of your color, simply reapply more color and blend again. This is layering and blending. Use a puff to clean up any eyeshadows that need cleaning up. Donna sucks in her cheeks and we already have a contour line there. So now we just go with a soft sort of peach color and start building a little layering with color in to make it fresh and dewy. For highlighting, we take a lighter powder like porcelain, ivory, or cream and build it up under her eyes to build a shelf on the cheeks and to separate the eyes to soften the brow bone, thus building a shelf and making a cheek more natural without a lot of blush. Donna smiles, the middle part of the face becomes the apple of the cheeks. We use our softest blush color there and blend back towards the top of the ear at the hairline to make a three-dimensional cheek that comes out at you. Donna has a very narrow face and this makes it appear more soft, rounded, and feminine. Bottom eyeliner should always be lighter than the top eyeliner. Here I use a medium brown and softly edge under Donna's eyes using short, soft strokes. I use liquid liner on the top of Donna's eyes, bleeding and blending it into her lash line. If liquid eyeliner is too difficult for you to use, then I definitely suggest you try a felt tip eyelining pen or draw across this area with a pencil and then use a Q-tip to smudge it in softly. Using a lip liner on Donna's lips for perfect control, I decide that she needs a little fuller lips. I start with a V in the middle of the upper bow using soft, short strokes. I play connect the dots from the corner of the V to the outer corners of the top lip and continue on the bottom lip from the outer corners into where I meet in the middle. Applying a generous amount of lip color on my lip brush, I fill in the lines of Donna's lips.
for mascara, I use a simple black because that's going to be the most dramatic thing on the face. Black is always the most visible part of any makeover. Making the lashes very feathery with my brush, being careful not to get any on our cheeks below. Mascara can make a great big mess, so take your time, it's very important. Now I'm going to go back and add just a little more color into Donna's cheeks just for that fresh dewy effect. Now you see how soft and subtle she looks. I go back with a large brush and soften her cheeks just a little bit more. To touch up Donna's face, I add a little more intensity into the eye color. I might make the lips a little more luminous by adding a little bit more color making sure that everything's perfect. Donna's look is complete. She's ready to go to the mall or she's ready for a night out on the town. Good makeup will hold up under any circumstances. Enjoy. Transformations has its own full line of cosmetics, created especially for the cross-dresser. Our line also includes wigs that are easy to take out of the box and wear. We stock accessories and educational materials, and now we customize makeup kits for you, based on the information you send us. Transformations Transforming Guide by John Davis, a simple, easy-to-follow, step-by-step instruction booklet on how to do your makeup. Transformations Transforming Guide for Cross-Dressing Makeup is the first in our series of makeup videos directed towards the transgender community. Look for our next video on wig styling. All these products are available in our free, easy-to-follow catalog of hair and makeup for the transgender community by Transformations. Why are you covering up all this gorgeous goddess hair? Good evening once again. I have been over here for about three hours, coming in as I was, and changed my whole, whole identity. Please, try it. It never hurts to be transformed into something else, something more glamorous, and something more beautiful. Try it. Stand here a while. Pose. Goddess. Romance. Beauty is in the eyes of the behold. Thank you.